The KXAN News Podcast is sponsored by Shelf Genie. In-depth, investigative. This is KXAN News Today. I love the energy. I mean, uh, everything in the city is, is like turning to South by, and that's really cool because, you, you know, you kind of feel the vibe, and it's like we're more excited than yesterday. Austin is a vibe. South by Southwest kicking off today, and those festival attendees, they flew all the way from Chile. People from all around the world have been in and out of the city, and they will be for the next nine days, the festival wrapping up Sunday, March 19th. And this means Austin is going to get a bit more crowded than it already is. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Miller. And I'm Dylan McKim. Several downtown area roads will be fully or partially closed for the duration of South By. That poses the question, how do I get around town? Don't worry, we have you covered over on KXAN.com. We have all you need to know. There's an interactive map that tells you which roads are closed and when, when the festival shuttles run, also a walking map and info on rideshare and public transit. And I know the people from Chile are going to probably appreciate that very <laughs> yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of visitors, lots of new faces. If you're listening to the podcast, Dylan, you are a team member, but this is your first time on the desk with yes. us. First time on the desk. I hope uh, kind of going from the Little League up to the majors right now. I for love me. it. Yeah, but I'm, I'm sure our podcast listeners recognize your voice. Exactly. So I hope so. You. I hope so. <laughs> Let me show you what's going on with your forecast here because, hey, you made it to Friday and we are looking at some pretty nice weekend weather. Let's get started with what's going on outside as you're getting your Friday started because we didn't necessarily see any of those big rowdy thunderstorms last night. That's the good news. The better news is our rain chances aren't something you really have to worry about today. We've got a couple little sprinkles out there, but a lot of cloud cover. As far as the live look outside goes, the Granite Shoals Whittlesey Landscape Supplies weather camera right now is showing me a cloudy sky. Every once in a while, I could see a little sprinkle on there. So if you see a few raindrops on your windshield, driving to work, driving to school this morning, you're not going to, you're not going crazy. You're not going to need any sort of umbrella either, though, because these are not going to be meaningful rain showers. Our temperatures are the 50s and 60s this morning, pretty similar to what we had yesterday, two to four degrees on either side of those temperatures we started our Thursday with. But our Friday afternoon going to be a little cooler. Temperatures not expected to get too far as we're going from the low 60s this morning to 70 degrees this afternoon. So a less than 10 degree warm up, but we're still going to be nice and mild. Not a whole lot of rain to talk about in the next six to seven days. It's more so going to be the temperature swings, which I'll outline for you coming up in your first morning forecast. Thank you, Kristen. A project that would change Austin public transportation could hit a snag. In 2020, Austin voters approved Project Connect. The project was estimated to cost about $7 billion, but those costs keep going up. And now KXAN's Nabil Ramana takes a closer look at a Texas bill that could halt the project. Walking down Guadalupe. The traffic here gets horrible, horrible, horrible. Emmy Duarte says he's in favor of the line that's proposed to run by campus. I think we should use more public transportation. In 2020, voters approved Project Connect, a system the city claims will improve access across Austin. I think that people never imagined that we would be in a situation like this where uh, a city would put something on the ballot with absolutely no end date or cap. But there have been some setbacks and cost estimates have increased. So while the original estimates were $7 billion, now we're up to $11 billion, and where is the limit? Representative Ellen Troxclair wants to check back in with voters after the increase, making sure if there are changes that they have a say. That's why she filed House Bill 3899, or the No Blank Checks Act. That's why it's important to have transparency when voters are going to the ballot box to know what they're actually voting on and how much it's going to cost them. Under the bill, any local government corporation created through a tax rate increase election would be required required to abide by the same rules cities and counties do when issuing debt. In this case, it would apply to the Austin Transit Partnership, the organization created to oversee Project Connect. If you're so confident that this is what the city wants, what is the problem with checking back into the voter, in with the voters and making sure that you truly have the authority to issue debt against their property taxes? Nabil Ramadna, KXAN News. Going in depth, Brian Smith, a political science professor at St. Edwards University, says he doesn't anticipate the bill fil uh, filings will generate enough support to be passed and signed into law. He says it's an unusual bill filing because there isn't much precedence in te the Texas legislature with regards to similar filings in the past. 
It's not something that Texas really has done before. We don't like to hold multiple elections because they're very expensive. We also don't like to bring things that the voters have already passed back before the voters. Smith adds this piece of legislation could provide another hurdle for municipalities getting projects off the ground. Speaking of Project Connect, some businesses along the Orange Line are worried this is going to shut them down. Could go down Guadalupe past the UT campus and Dirty Martin's Burger Restaurant and others started a petition. They're hoping to change the route. So far they have about 20,000 signatures, but they're still worried they could disappear. It was tough to hear, you know. Um, nobody wants to hear that. I mean, of course, but you know, I've certainly invested 34 years of, of my life in it and then the, the, the property and um, it, it's, um, it was tough. The Austin Transit Partnership tells us whether a property is needed for Project Connect is determined through the environmental planning process. No property acquisition plans have been solidified at this time. Why more people are choosing to pull their homes for sale from the market. And Williamson County extending its disaster declaration, the next step in order for the county to be paid back for recovery costs. Good morning, you are looking live at Granite Shoals as we see some clouds roll in this morning. Many Americans are putting their dreams of owning a home on hold. Redfin reports home buyers' monthly payments hit an all-time high. Mortgage rates right now, they're more than 7%, and home sales around much of the country have dropped a reported 24%. More people are choosing not to put their homes for sale as well, as we're seeing them save as investment properties and rentals. One South Florida realtor decided to hold hers despite helping so many neighbors sell their home. But is renting the smarter play? Or should you still try to sell despite the sluggish market? Why did you decide not to sell and instead to rent the property out? I have this tenant that's paying off my mortgage while this home sits and appreciates over time. 23 years from now, when I'm 60 years old and thinking about downsizing, that home will be worth over 1.4 million. NBC's Vicki Wynn with the buy or hold blueprint coming up this morning on Today. If you're looking for some new books, don't want to break the bank, an Austin nonprofit bookstore is ready to help out. Recycled Reads is saving around 47,000 books from landfills each month. The Burnett Road store helps the city in its Zero Waste by 2040 initiative. But it's not just the books on the shelves. It's also CDs, DVDs, board games, puzzles, and art. Many items donated. But the store also gets inventory from the Austin Public Library, and most items are priced at or below two bucks. I would wish that everybody in Austin knows about this. They donate those materials, and, you know, that could be somebody else's treasure. The store opens at noon Wednesday through Saturday. Donations can be dropped off during store hours in reusable bags or small boxes. A grand jury indicting a Burnett County judge, what he says led to the charges. And the new data showing a major disparity in Austin star test scores. Longhorns and Cowboys in Kansas City, Texas, trying to get to the semifinals without one of their top players. I've got more on that coming up. This KXAN News Podcast is brought to you by Shelf Genie. I'm Rosie Newberry from KXAN Studio 512. Considering replacing your kitchen cabinets? Struggling to find or reach things? Go to shelfgenie.com slash Austin. Shelf Genie designs custom pull-out shelves for your existing cabinets, adding convenience and value to the most used room in your home. Shelf Genie custom pull-out shelves, everything in reach. Good morning, a live look outside downtown Austin lit up a cloudy start to this Friday morning and the start of South by Southwest today. Thanks for joining us here on KXA and News today. You know, being on stage in front of a crowd, it's nerve wracking. That's something we understand a little bit. Yeah, I can relate a little bit. <laughs> There's a little girl in Florida, though, who wants to encourage everyone to be brave. Eight-year-old Peyton was the only one from her cheer team that could make it to the competition. So instead of backing out, she decided to do it alone. And not only that, as Brianda Viegas reports, Peyton won. <laughs> Think about how 
much spirit you need to do what this eight-year-old cheerleader did all by herself. I was like so afraid to get out there. Peyton Thorsby of Newport Ritchie is on the Kraken's cheer team that's made up of about five girls. I'm so shocked I got out there and I actually did it. Their cheer competition was in December at the Florida State Fairgrounds. Peyton arrived full of pep, but the rest of her teammates ended up not being able to make it. Her coaches told her that she obviously didn't have to. Um, if, she, if she wanted to forfeit, they understood. Peyton's mom says the coaches were about to call her, but then Peyton stepped up. Butterflies in my tummy tingling. And I was like shaking out there. Music got on and I started dancing. I started getting the, bug, the bugs out of my stomach and start the shaking stopped. When she was done, oh, forget it. There was a smile from ear to ear, and all she could keep saying was, Mommy, I can't believe I did it. I can't believe I did it. After competing against other teams and winning over the judges, Peyton earned first place. As she claimed the trophy, she even pulled up one of her teammates who arrived later on. She won, and she shared it with her friends. That's just, that goes to show you the character that she is. Jesus were like right behind my back and I and I he's right there he he has my back and I got out there and all I could do is to say thank you Jesus and thank you so much <laughs> that was Brianna Vallegas reporting so it was Peyton's first season as a cheerleader oh, wow and she says now that she when she gets older she wants to be a cheer coach she wants to yeah. inspire yeah. other people I was saying she has a career as a motivational yeah. speaker yeah. at this point change the sport to a <laughs> solo sport I would have I would have faked an ankle injury on that one I'd be like yeah. I can't go out guys I'm exactly. sorry I mean, really so you so many kids would back out in that mm -hmm. situation. Right. I would have. Even I mean, as a, a parent, I'd be like, are you sure you want to exactly. do this out there by yourself? What a brave little girl. That's amazing. Let me show you what's going on with your forecast here because clouds and radar not necessarily showing a whole lot over central Texas. However, we still have some storms out there towards Pawnee Woods. Could we see maybe one or two little bitty showers pop up between now and the end of the morning? Yes, but I'm not expecting anything in the way of meaningful or impressive rain. We are done pretty much with the significant rain chances and now we focus in on the temperatures because I think the temperatures will be the main story today. We're in the 50s and 60s to start, but we're not going to see nearly as impressive of a warm up today. A lot of that is the cooler air that's in place brought in by that cold front we had been tracking, but we're also starting off with quite a bit of cloud cover up top. Not seeing any of those low clouds. Your visibility looks good from Mason County to Fayette County. We've got relatively nice visibility is out there for your Friday morning drive. Our temperatures going from the low 60s to the mid 60s, but that forecast high is likely going to get stuck at about 70 degrees. It'll be upper 60s to low 70s across all of central Texas. So relative to yesterday's 86, it's a noticeable cool down today. Let's walk you through what to expect for your Friday. You'll notice a little bit of green kind of flashing here and there. That's that leftover light rain chance that we're going with this morning. This afternoon though, the clouds start to clear. We get a good amount of sunshine and before sunset tonight and then the clouds will come back as we get into the overnight hours and then tomorrow morning starts similar to what we've got out there now. Cloudy skies, maybe a few spots of light rain, nothing heavy. Wildfire danger today, low to moderate across all of central Texas here. As far as the humidity goes, uh, a little better today, courtesy of that front. It doesn't get down to zero, but I think it's a more manageable level before we quickly get back into the muggy to humid conditions to start the weekend. That's the thing about the weekend is tomorrow with a warm front moving through, we're going to be much warmer, but then there's going to be another cold front that comes in Sunday morning. Let me show you what to expect because this is a cold front right now that's clearing our area. Behind it, we're going to see a mix of sun and clouds, not only today, but tomorrow as well. Again, a good warm-up, though, expected Saturday. You'll notice we're not seeing any green popping up, though, between Saturday and Sunday. I think this second cold front is going to have more wind with it than it is anything in the way of rain. 7-8 forecast, low 70s today. Upper 80s tomorrow. So really big emphasis on the fact that, yeah, today's a little cooler, but we are going to be so much warmer tomorrow. I mean, there's going to be some of us in our southern counties kind of flirting with that 90 degrees. Now, Sunday behind that second cold front, we are going to be cooler by a good 15, 20 degrees, leaves us in the 60s. And then getting into next week, 
We've been advertising this uh, for quite a few days now. The fact that, yes, it'll be a cooler start to spring break in the 60s, but we do see those 70s and above average temperatures at that. Coming in Tuesday, Wednesday with a little more sunshine. And our overnight lows in the 50s and 60s, waking up Saturday, Sunday morning, getting down to the 40s. Tuesday and Wednesday morning of next week. So maybe some jacket weather as we get into the start of spring break. Hey, it could cost millions more to clean up in Williamson County after last month's ice storm. It's already spent about $12 million. The county extended its disaster declaration this week, allowing it the chance to be paid back by the federal government for recovery costs. Now, County Judge Bill Gravel said right now some of that money is coming out of a rainy day fund. That's because the county does not budget for disasters. This won't be the first time it's used this fund for an emergency. He says the county had to dip into it during the pandemic, the 2021 freeze, and other natural disasters. Some would call it a rainy day fund, but in my last four years as county judge, I call it a disaster fund uh, because on occasion we need to dip into that, and we will on this occasion. The next step for the county to be paid back for recovery costs sits on the president's desk. Judge Gravel said once President Biden signs the county's declaration, that would begin the payback process. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Good morning to you. Longhorns beat Oklahoma State twice in the regular season, trying to do it a third time, this time at the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City. No Timmy Allen, Longhorn senior, out with a leg injury. They say he's day to day. Rodney Terry named national coach of the year by Sporting News and now trying to get his team to win three games in three days. Tyrese Hunter knocks down a three. He had eight of their first ten really turned into a slugfest and Dylan DeSue offensive rebound the slam. He had 11 points and 11 rebounds and then DeSue at the defensive end wreaking havoc and Arterio Morris. Well, he can explode with the basketball in Texas up by nine at the half. Then they start to pull away early in the second half and it looks like they might do just that. Dylan Mitchell off the bounce pass from Serge Jabari Rice, and then it is Rice off the inbound. And well, OSU, remember, they had to beat OU two nights ago, so maybe a little fatigued, but they had something left in the tank. Longhorns get a little sloppy, and then the loose ball turns into a Caleb Asbury slam. He's the former Texas State Bobcat. And then Rodney Terry gets a technical. It's under a 10 point Texas lead. OSU with the ball, and Asbury thought he got fouled for three free throws. and well, no whistle. Serge Jabari Rice, that was the dagger. He had 15. Longhorns go on to win it. 61 to 47. So they get the three wins over Oklahoma State. And now the Longhorns on to the semifinals. Meantime, the UT women in action this afternoon, 1:30 in Kansas City. Different arena, municipal auditorium, and they will take on K-State. They not only beat K-State twice this year, but they beat them badly, including just last Saturday in Manhattan to get that share of the Big 12 regular season title. Back to you. Going for a run may benefit you more than you know. A new study from Texas A&M shows that exercise can have a direct impact on reducing breast cancer. Researchers found that a hormone secreted by the muscles during exercise can reduce tumor growth and even kill some cancerous cells. They also said that exercise could help with other cancers, but they haven't proven it yet. More electric charging stations are coming to Austin. City Council says the number of electric vehicles here is growing. City has a goal of reaching net zero community-wide greenhouse gas emissions by 2040. So in a statement, Council Member Leslie Poole said making charging stations, especially fast chargers, more accessible throughout the city might nudge people who may be on the fence about electric vehicles to make the switch. She goes on to say having more access and more users will go a long way toward reducing our use on fossil fuels citywide. Community-wide, I should say. According to the Texas Electric Transportation Resources Alliance, the number of electric vehicles in Austin has grown by nearly 40% in the past year. We could find out later today whether a Burnett County judge has turned him, himself in. A grand jury indicted Judge James Oakley on multiple charges, including a felony. The sheriff's office says he faces four other charges. They're tampering with evidence, two counts of abuse of official capacity and official oppression. According to court documents, the abuse of official capacity charges stem from his role serving on the board of directors for the Pertinales Electric Cooperative while holding his county judge seat. The court record claims that this violates Texas local government code. The official oppression and evidence tampering counts 
relate to a 2021 fender bender Oakley was involved in. Court documents state he, quote, removed a portion of the vehicle's bumper from the impact area of the collision with intent to impair this availability as evidence in the investigation. In a statement, Oakley told KXAN he moved the bumper to clear the grounds for the drivers. He also said, quote, I have every confidence that my attorney will be successful in the outcome of addressing these allegations during the process. Going in depth here, we looked into how Texas statutes work for removing an elected official, official from office. A number of offices, including county judge, attorney, clerk, even sheriff, fall under the same statute. General grounds for removal include incompetency, official misconduct, or intoxication on or off duty by drinking alcohol. Other grounds include failure to give bond. A person needs to petition for removal, and any officer may only be removed from a trial by jury. Thanks for joining KXAN News today. You can also listen to KXAN News Nightly every weekday after 5.30 p.m. for in-depth coverage on what matters most to you.